Good evening, everybody. I'm going to call to order the April 4th City of Boulder Planning Board meeting. Um, we have a couple members absent, but we've got one new member I want to welcome, Lupita. Welcome to being on Planning Board. It's Thank going to be you. as great as you've heard. <laughs> Thank you. So forgive me today if I make mistakes. The rest of us have never made mistakes, so you'll be... <laughs> you'll, I just you'll really say stand they, out. You told me so. Yeah. <laughs> so the first order on our or item on our agenda for every meeting is the approval of minutes, but we don't have any tonight, so that's quick. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have public participation. So if you are here to talk to us about something that is not on tonight's agenda, um, which is really one item, the North Boulder Public Library concept review, um, then this is the time to come up and speak to us. Do we have anybody signed up, Cindy? No. Nope. Cool. And nobody else out there is waving their hands trying to talk to us. So that seems like that's a good sign. Um, <clears throat> and we have two, uh, well, I guess the next thing is a discussion of dispositions, planning board call ups, and continuations. We've got two call up items potentially, um, both floodplain, floodplain development permits. Um, does anybody want to discuss either or both of them? Or is there any maybe questions for staff? Great. We'll zoom through that one. So now it's time for our first public hearing item, which is a concept plan review um, for a new library in North Boulder, uh, case number LUR 20190002. And um, we'll start off, the way these hearings work is we have a presentation from staff and then planning board members can ask staff questions. And then we have a presentation from the applicant and planning board can ask them questions. And then after that, we've got a, the public comment period. So if you wanna speak to us about the library, you gotta sign up with Cindy over here. Um, and you have three minutes, and that'll happen after those first two things happen, and then we'll turn the matter to the board for our conversation. And concept reviews are not <clears throat> something that results in a decision or a vote. It's just an opportunity for uh, applicants to come to us early in the process and get feedback before they um, have a fully baked project at the time of site review. So I'll turn it over to staff. Great, thanks very much. Good evening, members of the board. I'll turn it over to Sloan Walbert, the case manager, to present tonight's analysis. <laughs> Okay, um, good evening. So as you described, the item for discussion tonight is a proposal to construct an approximately 1,300 square foot public library on a city owned property at 4540 Broadway. The new library would implement the vision for a library in North Boulder, which was set by the 2018 Boulder Public Library Master Plan and also the North Boulder Subcommunity Plan. So just as an overview for tonight's discussion, I will quickly cover the information that was provided in the staff memo, um, which includes the purpose of concept plan review and the review guidelines, the existing site conditions and the surrounding context, a description of the proposed concept, and I'll end with some key issues identified by staff for discussion. <clears throat> so the project is required to complete this review because the development meets the threshold for required concept plan and site review. Uh, the site is over two acres. The concept plan review is the first step in this review process, and the purpose is to determine the general development plan for the site and to help identify some key issues in advance of the site review submittal. And the purpose is to just look at general development plans and evaluate a proposal for consistency with city requirements. Um, and as you said, the steps intended to give the applicant an opportunity to solicit comments from the board, staff, and the public, and potentially city council early in the development process. So as part of the public process, written notice was sent and notice was posted on the property. Staff has received a number of written responses regarding the project, which were forwarded to the board. Um, it's also important to note that this review follows a series of community engagement events which were facilitated by the library um, and which began in August of last year. And the feedback received through this process was detailed in a community engagement report. <coughs> so the approximately 2.76 acre property is located west of Broadway and north of Violet Avenue. Um, sort of a roughly Y-shaped site, which has frontages on four streets, Broadway, Violet, 13th Street, and 14th Street. The property is undeveloped, and no structures would need to be demolished with the proposal. 
The lot contains various vegetation, mostly grasses, but there is some more mature landscaping and trees along the creek and also at that um, boundary with the mobile home park. Four Mile Canyon Creek runs through the site and the property was donated to the city in 1999 for public purposes. The ones listed were a library, a public park or open space, or a public meeting hall. The site's impacted by the high hazard zone, conveyance zone, 100 year floodplain and 500 year floodplain, um, but the development is expected to avoid the floodplains and the high hazard and conveyance zones. The area is considered a high functioning wetlands, which is protected by the 25 foot inner and 50 foot outer buffer areas. And any development within these buffers would need to meet the wetlands regulations. <coughs> so the surrounding area has evolved over the last 30 years and now includes more, um, some nodes of more urban mixed use neighborhoods, which was guided by the North Boulder subcommunity plan. The property was annexed in 1990 as part of the larger, um, nearly 300 acre North Boulder group annexation. <coughs> the site's well served by existing transit service, primarily on Broadway, and is also well connected by the larger multimodal network. The Four Mile Creek multi-use path runs through the site. The site is accessed via a dead end on 14th Street and a cul-de-sac um, which extends 13th Street into the center of the site. Um, there's a picture of it. <coughs> Here is a view of 14th Street. The library would be in that location of the existing cul-de-sac. The site is neighbored by the Uptown Broadway mixed use development to the north. Um, Uptown was approved as a site review in 2002. It contains approximately 40,000 square feet of commercial space and 245 residential units. The buildings are two and three stories and um, have a maximum height of 48 feet. A library and surface parking were sort of conceptually represented um, in the same general locations as a proposal as part of those site reviews with the understanding that uh, a subsequent site review would be required. Um, but that's also sort of explains this, these stairs and plaza area which extend into the site. <coughs> um, the Boulder Meadows Mobile Home Park is privately owned and located to the east, contains approximately 640 manufactured homes. Um, a defined sort of vehicular storage area extends from the park into the site, uh, which is shown here. And the Violet Crossing development is located to the south. This was approved as a site review in 2010. Um, it consists of 10 residential buildings and a total of 98 apartment units. Um, this development is predominantly two stories and uh, has a maximum height of 35 feet. <clears throat> and lastly, Violet Park is a planned seven acre neighborhood park to the southeast of the site. Um, it's designed as a neighborhood park with both passive and active amenities, but there's no timeline at this point um, for, the, for those improvements. The property is designated as three separate designations on the land use map of the comprehensive plan. These are mixed use business, medium density residential, and open space other. It appears that the library and parking lot would be located within the MUB designation. So likewise, the site crosses three zoning district boundaries, <coughs> which are business main street, residential medium two, and mixed use two. The building would be located in the MU2 district, which um, is described as mixed use residential areas adjacent to a redeveloping main street area, which are intended to provide a transition between a commercial area and an established residential area. <clears throat> so regarding the adopted plans that sort of create a framework for this project, um, the property is located within the North Boulder subcommunity plan, which was adopted in 1995 to help guide future development in North Boulder. Um, and I'll go into a little bit more detail when we get to key issues. The need for a full service library in North Boulder was first identified in the 2007 
library master plan. It's also a priority goal in the updated 2018 library master plan, which was adopted by council in September of last year. The master plan includes a goal of opening a full service branch library in North Boulder with hours and services consistent with the other branch libraries. And lastly, the 2019 CIP included $1.7 million for the design and construction of the library. <clears throat> so moving on to the concept, the proposed use is a 12,800 square foot branch library. The interior programming includes large community spaces, quiet reading areas, there's a Boulder Reads offices, classrooms, a kid space, and a larger maker space. <coughs> um, the kids space is connected to an outdoor playground and the maker space also has direct access to an outdoor working area and also community garden. Um, the proposal also includes a new urban plaza which extends the current sort of public square um, and that could allow potentially for community events. Concept includes 28 parking spaces where 32 spaces would be required by the land use code, which amounts to a 12.5% parking reduction. The library is considered a government facility use in the land use code, um, and per the use table, a use review is required for government facilities in all of the applicable zone districts, and that use review would be processed concurrent with any site review application. <clears throat> so the site plan includes a sort of trapezoidal shaped building on the north end of the site at the terminus of 13th Street. A new connector street is proposed between 13th and 14th Streets to extend the existing street grid. Um, the site's designed to encourage vehicular access from 14th Street directly into the parking area. There are some um, bike and pedestrian connections that occur at Broadway and into that existing four mile multi-use path. Um, and that east-west street connection is intended to serve as an extension to that urban plaza and to be designed as a shared space with a pedestrian oriented plaza and a street. The proposed building is two stories and approximately 35 feet in height. Programming is distributed between both floors. Um, the building is arranged with the highest point and the main entrance to be aligned to the center of 13th Street and the massing tapers down both on the east and west sides. The second story features a planted green roof, um, which would be highly visible, as you can see there. Uh, the building is proposed to be constructed of poured in place concrete. The north elevation is more solid and the south elevation um, is more articulated and broken down, which opens up to that open space. <coughs> the plan describes the use of several green technologies and systems which are intended to help achieve a net zero building, and the applicant's materials had a lot of detail on those systems. So staff identified two key issues for discussion. The first would be whether the proposal is compatible with the comprehensive plan, and the second is whether it's consistent with the North Boulder subcommunity plan. <clears throat> so staff finds that the proposal meets the policies and intent of the comprehensive plan. The majority of the improvements are located within that MUB designation, which covers neighborhood serving business areas like the North Boulder Village Center. Public uses are encouraged in these areas. The proposal also appears to be consistent with a number of goals and policies, which are listed on the screen, um, most notably the cultural policies. <coughs> uh, the library would serve to increase, well, would increase awareness of library programs and would help expand services to underserved communities. It includes extensive community space and educational resources to the community. It could also um, serve as an anchor for certain community services for the area. Uh, it does represent an infill development that is well connected by multimodal connections and transit. 
Um, it could also contribute to the established neighborhood center and would easily be accessible from foot, bike, and transit, as I described. Um, it would contribute to a sense of place for the neighborhood and achieve our help lead to a walkable 15 minute places. <clears throat> and as I described, um, there are green technologies and systems which are intended to be incorporated in the design and they're designed to be apparent to the community and sort of have an educational component to them. So in the memo, staff did point out some aspects that need consideration as the project progresses. Um, the quality of the building would largely depend on the execution and the detailing and craftsmanship of the poured in place concrete building, which would be evaluated at site review. Um, there also needs to be careful consideration of how that shared street plaza would be designed to make sure that all modes are safely accommodated. And then lastly, as um, most site reviews, we need to evaluate the transportation, traffic, and parking impacts of the use. <clears throat> so as I described earlier, the project site is located within the boundaries of the North Boulder subcommunity plan, which sets forth the official vision for the future of the community. Um, <clears throat> the plan also establishes a street and pedestrian bicycle network. The property is located within the area defined for a village center. Um, the village center was intended to accommodate a more intense mix of land uses, which includes civic uses, and was meant to serve as the um, heart and focal point of the community area. A branch library was envisioned in the plan. Um, the community facilities recommendations state that the library should be located in the village center or, or a neighborhood center, and that the services should be primarily oriented toward the needs of youth in low income and disadvantaged populations. The plan does state that the village center is an ideal location for the library to create a 15 minute neighborhood and um, to take advantage of those um, vehicular and multimodal connections. So the proposal would be consistent with this intent as described by the plan. <clears throat> a defined village green was planned along Four Mile Canyon Creek. Um, the intent of the village green was to serve as a community facility and to help foster a sense of community. And um, the proposal does meet this intent and allows for any um, necessary flood improvements through the area. The project is also subject to development guidelines for both all neighborhoods and the village center. Um, generally, the proposal does appear to meet guidelines related to site design and building design and um, providing pedestrian interest. Um, and then lastly, the site is impacted by the planned extension of 14th Street from its current terminus on um, to Violet Avenue. And in meeting this requirement, the applicant has been requested to sort of construct an extension down to that property line with Boulder Meadows. Um, but at this point, that vehicular storage area would preclude the full construction, including the bridge across the creek. And that would be something that we'd have to look at um, in future capital improvement projects. Um, and just as a side note, an amendment was improved, approved in 2010 to realign that north-south vehicular co connection from 13th Street <laughs> to 14th Street. And so that was just a quick overview and I'm happy to answer any questions. <clears throat> All right, thanks a lot, Slim. Does anyone have a, any questions for staff? John? Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in, in the potential extension of 14th Street to Violet. What is the sort of timetable that the city has in mind for addressing that? So my understanding is there is not one at this point because that um, that sort of trapezoidal parcel owned by the mobile home park would preclude the construction. So I think um, there's not any definitive timeline at this point. So there hasn't been any discussions with the mobile home park about that? 
piece of land. There has been a number of discussions with them over the years. Um, that trapezoidal piece of property serves as a valuable piece of storage for them. Um, I think that there were some discussions recently. I don't necessarily know whether or not the disposition of that discussion resulted in them wanting to sell the property, but there has been discussions of our continued interest in the property. So, so they're aware of the interest and uh, we're not, uh, we, with what we're dealing here, we're not aware of any any likely immediate change in the situation? Is Not immediately, correct? but we are at the concept plan phase, so we can continue the discussion throughout the site review phase. Uh, Thank you. Design. Okay. Any other questions for staff? I have several questions. Go for it. All right. First question of a long line. <laughs> Actually, I only have a few. Um, uh, one part what I was reading in the northern part of this parcel by 14th Street, there was a description at some point that you had a potential uh, bridge onto the uh, Boulder Meadows community. But I, when I saw the word potential, that kind of tell me it's not worked out yet, and I would like to know what the, the actual situation there. Has there been any real conversations or? So um, that's the way it was described in the application materials, but it's probably when you get to the applicant presentation, that's probably a good question for them. So um, I guess I, for the applicants, I will have some of the other questions regarding also the, the actual uh, exchanges with the community. Yeah, probably that's more for the applicant. Okay, cool. Thank David, you had something? Um, yeah, um, just, uh, I think it's a typo on uh, in the packet, but it, um, there's a place where it references uh, access, uh, drop-off access on the west side, which would be the Broadway side. It should really, it's the east side, right? Sorry, it is the east side. I, I just figured it was a typo because uh, I couldn't imagine that we were planning a drop-off on Broadway. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually, that, that reminds me of one question. I, I didn't write it, but when I was looking at, um, is this um, that is it a one-way street that we are talking about from coming from 14 and, and 13, or they're both ways? I th I think it's still preliminary in design, but I think the intent is two ways. Great. Any other any other questions for staff? Great. So it's time for the applicant presentation. You guys are up. All right. Thank you. Hi, I'm Antonia Gauna. I'm the public services manager for the library and I'm managing this project for them. I know you all have received a number of letters in advance of this meeting in support of this project and there are a number of people here in support of this project as well and that is reflective of the desire for um, a library in North Boulder as an anchoring spot to that community. The recognition that a full service library is needed in North Boulder has been in every single master plan since 1995 and as Sloan mentioned in the North Boulder sub-community plan, it also routinely comes up as a high priority in library, in library users library user surveys, and was recognized again as a high priority when we talked to the community and doing our work for the 2018 library master plan. Community input groups ranked funding for this library as one of the top priorities for support when queried about the, about the possible extension of the culture of the community culture and safety tax that was originally approved in 2014. The four-year extension was approved by Boulder, by Boulder, by Boulder, Boulder voters, excuse me, and funds the bulk of this project. So this is exciting, right? We um, are recognizing that a library is wanted in this community. We're meeting a long overdue need. We recognize that this will likely become um, a hub for the community and a point of civic pride. So we took great responsibility in moving forward with this project. We were anxious to find an architect who was innovative, visionary, creative, skilled in library design and urban planning, and who meshed well with our organizational and citywide citywide values, and we found that in WorkAC, who just happens to be declared the number one design firm in 2017 by the American Institute of Architecture. So in the first phase of this project, we completed the site analysis, we did extensive community engagement, and we did preliminary program planning for the interior and the services of the library. We reached out to and met with specific underserved populations, including lower income residents and Spanish speaking population. Armed with bilingual staff members from both the library and WorkAC, 
Um, we held a series of events in North Boulder last August. We also attended targeted meetings to meet with the residents of BHP residential facilities, with the Ponderosa and Boulder Meadows manufactured home communities. Our conversations continue with Boulder Meadows um, as we work together to find a way of providing that direct access to those neighbors who are immediately to the east of the library site. We are committed to providing that amenity as available to those neighbors as it was their number one priority that we heard from the residents in that community. We're currently in phase two of the project, which includes building and site design. We also just hosted another round of community engagement events focused on gathering input on design and problem programmatic planning for the library, both interior and exterior. We'll be checking with the community in May to let them know what we heard during the March engagement events, how it influenced the design, and we'll be showing them a new schematic model of the library. Um, we're excited to keep moving forward, and with that, I'm going to introduce our architect from WorkAC, Dan Wood, to tell you more about our concept plan. Hi, everybody. This is a really Hello. great opportunity to be here. Um, this is our favorite project in the office. It's really amazing to work on a project that has this much support and the amazing staff at the library. And so we're really excited. We want to do the best possible building um, that we've ever done. So we, one of the great things about the site selection process and the early community engagement was that we were able to spend a lot of time, um, and my partner I and I are both academics, and so we, we are really interested in research, and we were able to kind of spend a lot of time here in Boulder and really think through you know some of the very special issues that we have here I can't go into it in too much detail but you know we really we wanted to <clears throat> kind of explore Boulder as this kind of city that exploits nature in many different ways um, uh, through its incredible geography but also through its buildings which really engage with the outdoors in interesting ways including the main library um, and also the history of progressive involvement of the community um, throughout Boulder's history um, and Colorado's history you see we have Drop City there which was founded by Boulder people um, and I think you know really through engaging with the, the neighbors and the community really understood this as a very special place where people are really engaged in their um, in their in their civic spaces. The site uh, uh, Sloan gave an amazing reading of the site, so I, I won't go into that uh, too too much. Um, we have received a new survey, so a lot of the comments in, um, that we received from you, we were able to kind of already pick up, and we've uh, made some adjustments, and I'll go through those uh, in a moment. Um, uh, but we do have the full survey now, and that did uh, institute some changes as was anticipated by the report. Um, a lot of what we heard from the community was about outdoor space. Um, and so what we did, one of the ways that we are organizing the building is taking indoor spaces, uh, the kids' space, the adults' area, um, the community spaces, and the maker space, and associating them with the outdoor spaces. So that's why the kids' space um, has an uh, outdoor playground. The adults have access to the outdoors, not just uh, physical access, but also there are incredible views on the site. Um, the, the community, we thought, really had to have a presence. We want the building to have a presence on Broadway. That's one of the reasons we moved it west to the to the um, cul-de-sac area. And we thought the community space should really address Broadway and have the ability to be accessed from Broadway and from the public transportation on Broadway. Uh, and to really form that kind of village square um, idea that, that was in the original master plan. And then the maker space, we are imagining a maker space that really engages with the outdoors in different ways maybe a kind of maker kitchen. Um, and so the community gardens and the maker space um, are intertwined and the maker space also has a large outdoor area for, for projects. Um, one of the things that was not talked about on the site are the incredible views. Um, because of the topography, it drops off relatively quickly um, from the site. So while we're out of the floodplain, it, it kind of drops off and you have views both of the foothills uh, and the flat irons and even that residential community to the south at, at two stories, you, you're already seeing over the roofs of that, which is something very special. Of course, the views had to be to the south, um, so we have some interesting uh, environmental issues there. Um, what we did, we also wanted to address the fact that there is a residential community on the on the north and a more open site to the south, and so we put the quieter, uh, more the functions that 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 uh, let's say. 
um, are a little bit quieter, a little bit more enclosed um, on the north side, uh, and then the spaces that could really open up to the outdoors through views um, and big, larger windows on the south side. And we put the community spaces as the heart. We really see the library of the future as a kind of community, uh, a, a community center, uh, as much as a kind of book repository. Um, and that's something that's, that has been great to work with the library on. So you see, uh, so the building has these two parts, one part with the, the facing south, um, and then the other part, which has the main entrance. Um, what's great about entering on access with 13th Street is we can come in from Broadway um, and from 14th Street kind of equally, and it, it really brings together people who are coming by bicycle or walking or by bus um, with the few people who are going to come by cars. Um, and then that kind of massing, that trapezoidal massing, um, also exists in section. Um, so we really lift up the building. So the highest point of the building uh, is right on axis with 13th Street, and it tapers off, as described. What that also does is, is, you know, it puts the bulk of the building at the street so that the neighbors maintain uh, some of their views as well. By folding down the back area and planting it with green, it almost becomes a kind of garden on the north side. We're also using that as roof access. So we can walk, the roof is at a very, very shallow slope, about 1 in 24, so much less than a handicap ramp. So it's a fully accessible walkway where you will be able to enter the community spaces on the second floor for after hours access, which was something that we heard from the community that would be beneficial. And so we can close off the downstairs and just have the community space open after hours. Um, we are really exploring cutting edge and radical. We really embrace boulders. Um, uh, Boulder's um, environmental consciousness, and um, it'll be a net zero building, and we really want, um, as described, this, these systems to become part of the design, such an integral part of the architecture, kind of like the library sh spans over the river. We want our, I mean the creek, we want our building to kind of really celebrate nature in, in sustainable, uh, by, by celebrating sustainability. So the building is kind of iconic. Um, both in terms of its form, but also in the way that it embraces nature and embraces sustainability. So we think of it as kind of iconic systems plus iconic form. So here is the view from, from Broadway, and you see the green part on the left is that kind of um, accessible ramp up to the second floor, and you see the site kind of dropping off to the right um, as the building comes to, to its height. And so that places the bulk, as, as we said, on 13th Street, so that's the view looking down 13th Street, which is also the main entrance of the library. Um, and you can see how by kind of folding the form and creating these two different places front and back, it's much lower towards the north into the residential area, and that will be planted and be much more of a kind of garden experience, and then it really opens up as a, as a really civic institutional building um, to the south. Um, and so this looks like here. Um, I did want to say the concrete, I mean, we'll be using concrete primarily underground, so uh, it'll be, I think it's, we're looking at a steel structure, um, and we're hoping to do a timber, steel and timber uh, combination so that, that we can expose the, the timber on the inside. And then the cladding materials also, we are really interested in eclectic cladding materials. The green roof is in a way a cladding material. Big windows, we're looking at wood cladding and, and maybe zinc or, or metal, so we're, that's all still in process, but um, I did want to clarify that. Um, so this is the layout of the plan. The maker space is on the right. The big adult uh, reading area, working area is on the left. The kids area to the lower right. And then staff areas, meeting rooms, um, ancillary spaces, the, the desks are, are kind of in the center. And then on the second floor, we have the really big community room. We actually have a big community room, and then we have a bigger community room. Uh, and the two can be combined for the biggest community room. Uh, and also Boulder Reads is up there with another small meeting room. So that's really a, a big community center. And you can see how you can access that from the roof. Uh, and then this is the view from the creek. Um, so the previous renderings that you saw had, a, had more kind of smaller windows. We still have that kind of um, eclectic patterning, um, but we've consolidated to much bigger windows. It just looks better from the inside and actually kind of creates a transparency through the building, which is also interesting you can see in this slide. Um, so you, you, in cer certain areas, you'll be able to see right through the building. So this was the previous rendering, um, and then this is the new kind of consolidated. Those diagonal line hatches are um, chimneys for passive ventilation. We're going to be trying to do as much as possible with passive ventilation. We'll have some heating and cooling, um, but we're hoping to really um, use as much natural ventilation as possible. And s we're really expressing that with those chimneys. So it's a kind of thickened facade, um, which provides shading for the windows, but also provides that depth for those kind of chimneys. We're also hoping to have an actual chimney um, and a fireplace in the, in the library. Um, 
which we're working on, gas fireplace. Uh, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and so here you see how that thickened facade, so you see there's a kind of zone. So we can use that zone not only to shade the windows, which are facing south, and we, we're going to need that shading. It's also for that, those kind of outdoor ducts, those chimneys that bring in natural air. We can also do things like planting in there. Part of it is part of the uh, playground, so kids will be able to climb up into the facade with netting and then take a slide down. So it's a really active facade. We can hang seating. We can put shelving on the inside. We're looking at putting a greenhouse in there as well. So it's a really active facade. Um, for the community. And so this is the site plan. Um, there were a lot of comments on the site plan. Um, so one of the main changes that's happened um, in response primarily to the survey, but also some of the comments that we received, um, was we moved the building. Um, so you see the dash lane. Once we got the actual survey information, we realized in order to maintain the existing um, Four Mile Creek uh, bike path, uh, uh, pedestrian you know, combination path, we did have to move the building. So it's moved north and east, um, a total of about 20, 21 feet. Uh, it says northwest. Someone has an east-west problem. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's me. Um, so that's one of the things we, we did. So that maintains the path, which was one of the comments. We also reduced that, um, so that street, the, the connector street, we really are thinking that as a, as a continuation of the plaza, we're really trying to discourage use, vehicular use of that. It'd be primarily for emergencies. Um, we are looking at two-way, but that's only because 13th Street is two-way. Um, if it was a one-way street, we would have to make that portion of 13th Street one-way as well. So that's a discussion. Um, but it, we're really able to narrow it down. We're going to use um, you know, paving that continues the, the paving of the plaza. Um, and I have some images of that. Uh, the other thing we included was the ADA accessible ramp. We just hadn't uh, noted it in the plan, but we will have an accessible ramp because there is a, there is a quite a grade change between uh, Broadway and 13th Street, those steps that you saw in the, in the images. Um, and we are looking at potential collect connections from Boulder Meadows. Um, there is some resistance from the owner of Boulder Meadows on those connections, but the library um, staff is going to be walking the property and, and looking at those. Um, <clears throat> I do want to say also in my my last minute and 15 seconds. Uh, we designed this as if the 14th Street extension was there. Um, so we've laid it all out with the 14th Street extension. We did a series of exercises where we wanted to see whether that would impact the siting of the building. We feel it's really important to push the building towards 13th Street and towards Broadway, to have a presence on Broadway in the Arts District in North Boulder. Um, so and it doesn't really impact us at all. We lose two parking spaces in our parking lot, but we're going to gain a lot of street parking um, with, if that happens. So it is being designed with that in mind. Um, oh, uh, the other thing that happened when we moved it is it went from 35 feet down to 31 feet now um, because of the, the, once we figured out the topography and the 25 foot um, rule. And actually we feel that that has, it's, uh, the proportions are quite nice now. Um, so lastly, we are looking at some shade structures. Um, we're showing the bike parking. We have long-term and short-term bike parking. We have plenty of space um, for as much bike parking as we need, and we're, and we're looking at siting uh, some furniture, site furniture, um, around the playground and the community gardens. Um, we are working for spaces for the rain gardens, uh, for stormwater man management, which was another one of the comments. Um, one of the great things about the big tapering roof is we'll be able to get the rain off into those rain gardens very easily. Um, so that's the site plan. That's my time. I guess I'm just going to stop. Feel uh, free to finish what you're saying there. <laughs> um, <coughs> I mean, just these are just some images of what these kind of pedestrian street looks like, what green roofs look like um, that was also in the material. And then that's it. Thank you. Great. Thanks very much. Um, so does anyone have questions for the applicant? John? Could you describe the uh, how you decided how much area was the internal area for the various purposes was appropriate? Uh, yeah, we developed a program with the library in the er very early part. It, it came out of the community engagement. We also, we've designed several libraries and we looked at, we did a big survey of all the branch libraries that the three branch libraries that currently exist in the main library to see what size spaces worked um, for all these. And together with staff, we came up, you know, we want to keep the size down uh, for budget reasons. Um, and we can't go bigger than 15,000 square feet. That's the biggest building that can go on. So um, it was just a, you know, a kind of working it through with staff and with, with our experience and, and what we saw in other branch libraries. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? This is where I have the questions. Yeah. Um, so 
I was hoping that you can give us some specific examples of how the library will be specifically responsive to the, you know, the community. And I'm specifically concerned about Boulder Meadows because, you know, that we have very specific things. So I would like to hear what exactly, you know, at least some more specific things that you have discussed with them. In terms of how the residents... Can you talk yeah. into the microphone? Yeah, and use the mic then. Are you thinking of in terms of how the residents would access the library, or are you thinking in terms of the services and programs provided to the, to the residents? Yeah, but okay. I think that uh, you can start with the access. I think we talked a sure. little bit about the potential pathway mm -hmm. as one and the actual activities. Services. Absolutely. So we do have ongoing conversations with the owner of, of Boulder Meadows, and they are very open and understand the, um, the, the rationale behind providing that connection directly from the community. It's just a matter of where that goes. And so we're talking through with them the most opportune so it doesn't negatively impact their site and the, the residents, and so that's a safe access for them so that they don't access directly into a parking lot where traffic might be going through. So we're just working on strategically where it makes the most sense to put that in there and then um, as staff had mentioned there's ongoing competitions about our interest in that property so we'll see where that goes and then in terms of services and programs provided um, we will this library in particular will will reach out to these underserved populations in very specific ways so our our Boulder Reads our Boulder Reads Adult Literacy Program will be based here. They'll also have conversations in English to work with um, speakers of English as a second language. We also have the um, a plethora of educational opportunities, whether it's through the youth services and programs or the makerspace opportunities. Um, there's, of course, yeah, the community gardens came up as a high priority for them. They actually sought um, grant funding to partner with us in community gardens, and unfortunately the timing didn't work out at that point, but we will continue to look into that as a future possibility. So this library in particular will meet the needs of that community more than our other locations do. Thank you. And we, I mean, it wasn't mentioned, but uh, there is a small corner library. In Gotta get on the mic. Oh, yeah. so we There's have a to small corner library in North Boulder, so, which already does a lot of, um, yeah. It's tiny, but it, they do incredible events there. And so there's already a kind of population that we were able to interact with who uses the library. And also, also children's spaces was obviously very, very important. Yeah. We have a very large area for children, uh, and most children like the slide right. aspect. And then, <laughs> <laughs> when we met with these communities, two of the um, higher priorities that came out for them is a need for community gathering space. There is no space in North Boulder for that. And we have tried to be incredibly generous in providing opportunities for community to meet either in large groups or small one-on-one -on -one for independent tutoring or small group collaboration. So we also have the option open for potential after hours access. We heard resoundingly from this community that they want community meeting space um, and free community meeting space, which we will be providing to the community. The second one was, um, what was I just thinking of? You know, the opportunity for ongoing after school and educational programs and partnering with our maker space and our community gardens and our youth programs is obviously um, a supreme opportunity for that. Yeah. Thank you. You just covered that because that was one of my questions whether you will have, you know, after school activities because I think for that community will definitely be, you know, taking advantage of them. And I don't know if I got this um, before. But um, I'm wondering um, if you will have seriously thought about having that special emphasis on Spanish in that community mm -hmm. to bring not only the community in Boulder Meadows, but in the local community so that, you know, our communities really integrate. I think this will be a great opportunity to provide that space. Yeah, through our recent demographic information, we find out the highest concentration of Spanish-speaking population is here in North Boulder. At our current Novo Corner Library, we have one full-time Spanish-speaking employee. That person will obviously come with us to this location. We'll place a heavy emphasis on hiring more Spanish-speaking employees. Um, so absolutely. And in addition to that, our Boulder Reads Literacy Program um, works directly with a number of Spanish-speaking Residents as well as Spanish-speaking organizations that serve the needs of that community in unique ways. Great. Thanks very much, guys. Other questions? Yeah, you still more? Go ahead. No, I'm good. Oh, okay. Yes, uh, we've heard a lot lately about possible changes in the, in the library system in Boulder, whether it should uh, 
establish a, a district or have other changes in the way it's operated and raises funds and so on. So I'm wondering, depending on, on the outcome of those uh, decisions, how might, how might that change what is most desirable at this location or, or potentially elsewhere given possible changes in the, in the service area and so on? Yeah, um, I don't think that funding design would change the array of programs and services we offer. We've identified priorities through community engagement and the library master plan that's kind of honed in on those. It would, however, impact um, the extent to which we could per that the extent to which we could provide those. So whether you know the full amount of operating hours, the full amount of uh, community programming that we're able to offer, all of those things would be impacted by the level of sustainable funding that the library is able to secure. So uh, let's say, for example, that there's a, a library district created that would include areas in the county. Um, yeah. Would, if, if that was to happen, would you still be looking to build here this type of facility in this location, or would it lead to to a desire to do other projects yeah, elsewhere. And, and just for context here, guys, I know we're getting a little bit off topic. We, we do need to keep our questions and comments to the concept review criteria. And funding and plans like that are not part of that, nor are specific architectural program components or some of the service things. So I'll let them answer, but please be brief. Yeah, so good evening, David Farnan, Library and Arts Director. Glad to be here. Uh, the answer is yes. I mean, the, the demand for a library in that community is older than 30 years, uh, we would execute and continue that project without interruption. Uh, it would, it's, our, it's our goal, no matter what the um, uh, governance structure is, we would continue to execute on the plan as it is laid out. So for, and I think you're aware of this, John, it, it includes, um, the master plan includes the Novo Library completion, potential expansion to gun barrel, and then potentially expansion to service areas if it were a district. Uh, to areas outside of the city. But they, those would not occur until after the completion of this project. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Great. Any other questions? Okay, so it's time for us to hear from the public. Who do we have signed up? <clears throat> Cindy will bring me a list, and as you guys um, get called, I'll call three names at a time. Please come on up and get ready to speak. Cool, and so we'll... Um, we have a few folks, and um, when you speak, you have three minutes. You'll see the little lights on the um, uh, DS there um, go from green to yellow to red. Yellow means you need to be wrapping up, and red means you're, it's time to stop talking. Um, and uh, some folks have pooled time, so when you have pooled time with other folks, we just need to see the other people here in the audience with us. So um, we're going to start off, um, and I'll just call three people at a time. So we got. And also, if you haven't signed up, it's time to do it. So um, it's still time to do that. Um, David Hartzell, Tim Crook, and Laura Duncan. And David has pooled time with Betsy Asher. Betsy, are you here? Hi, Betsy. Great. Come on up, David. I'm going to let Laura go first, if that's OK. I timed myself, so <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I'm going to be within the limits. Uh, my name is Laura Duncan. I live on the corner of 14th and Rosewood. I am a teacher at Boulder High School. Um, I live in the community. I am a property owner. Your son took AP chemistry from me. Um, and so I am also, as a scientist, I'm extremely data-driven. And I would like to address several misstatements in the library written proposal, which I read very carefully. Number one, the neighborhood directly north of the site is the village at Uptown Condominium Development, not the village at Uptown Apartments. The condominiums are at least 75% owner-occupied. The library proposal states that it is consistent with the NOBO sub-community plan, but that is not the case. In the original 1995 NOBO sub-community plan, most of the area north of the creek and south of Yarmouth was to be a town center with shops, bus turnarounds, and a large village green. The proposed library site was on Broadway, west of 13th and north of the creek. It was directly on Broadway in that map. The 2002 LUR reflected a change to primarily residential, with businesses centered on Broadway. 
14th Street in that plan is completed to Violet to provide north and south access to the library. The cul-de-sac is intact as a pickup and drop-off area only. The library itself is located completely on the vacant lot, and there is no street connecting 13th and 14th on that LUR. As property purchasers, we should reasonably be able to expect that any development of the lot be consistent with a 2002 LUR. For example, my realtor told me that 14th Street would eventually be completed south to Violet. In addition, the HOA has been paying for landscaping and maintenance of the cul-de-sac and the lawn south of Animal Arts, but there has been no maintenance of the lot itself, aside from the city mowing it once a year and us in the community picking up the trash. Um, this would suggest that the ultimate plan was to site the library on the vacant lot only, as is depicted in the 2002 LUR. The November 2017 renewal of the CCS tax for capital improvements was intended to fund multiple needs and should not be viewed as an unqualified endorsement of a larger Novo library. In fact, the library's own community engagement survey conducted in the spring of 2017 found that only 40% of Novo residents felt a larger library was needed. Um, as opposed to 60% in gun barrel. Fewer than 5% of the attendees polled during the 2018 community meetings cited a need for maker space, meeting space, exhibition space, or a cafe, and as a scientist, I would consider that not statistically significant. These non-library elements increase the building size and form the basis for the significant changes requested in the library proposal. There are those who seem to think that condo dwellers don't care about privacy or relentless traffic. Actually, these issues matter even more to us because we have so little private space. I can see right into the bathroom of my neighbors across the alley, but we have a tacit agreement to manage our window coverings and avert our eyes. I know most of the people walking around and I'm not excited about bringing more strangers into my neighborhood beyond the business customers who park in front of my place because a part of the agreement the city made with the developer was to install smaller parking lots. And in the summer, we are swarmed with bicycle riders who drive their bikes up here to meet for rides up 36. High density housing allows more people who work in Boulder to live in Boulder, like me, um, but people who choose this option will only choose it if their needs for privacy, quiet, and community are respected. Thank you very much. Thanks, Laura. So you actually had um, pooled time with John Lovett. John, are you here as well? Thanks. Changing the order screws us up a little bit, so don't do that. Um, David Hartzell, you're not going to be last, but I'm tempted. <laughs> I could wait. Yeah, that's cool. All right, thank you for the time. So yes, I'm Dave Hartzell. I'm an owner at uh, the Village at Uptown uh, Condo Complex as well. So I'm here to further stress the traffic issues with the development and the existence of the library. Um, I believe the current plan lacks adequate access for the construction phase and the operational phases of the library. Um, the 14th Street extension between Rosewood and Violet should absolutely be completed first. The absence of this extension will shift traffic to residential streets which are currently not wide enough according to code and are barely wide enough for two-way traffic today. 13th and 14th Streets are only 34 feet wide, not 38 feet wide, I believe as current uh, city design standards require. So construction and emergency vehicles are gonna have difficulty accessing the library which is deeply set into this neighborhood. Um, Boulder Revised Code, Title 10, Chapter 8 of the Fire Code requires a minimum of 20 feet for emergency access vehicles. Rosewood and 13th Street only provide 18 feet. So despite what the Fox and Tuttle traffic study states, you only have to live in the neighborhood for a few weeks to realize that we have real traffic problems and we have real parking problems today. So um, concerned neighbors, myself included, attempted to get our own traffic study done, but no Boulder firm would enlist with us for fear of being blacklisted. We solicited input from anonymous traffic engineers to better understand the impact, and the roads are tight, and the parking is often at capacity on the street. Um, plus, there's gonna be an, a deficit of parking spots with the library from the get-go. So there's gonna be overflow during events and meetings and things like that. So with the uh, Boulder Library currently unable to meet its current financial obligations, this plan continues to put drama and possibly lives at risk, including those of patrons and children in the neighborhood. Without adequate road infrastructure, the library becomes a hazard to many. So I'm asking that the city commit to installing the proper road infrastructure, which is the extension of 14th Street from Violet to Rosewood, which is also in alignment with the uh, sub-community development plan. Thank you. Great, thanks David. Tim Crook, and then we have 
Adelaide Pear, and then Brett Sochik. Hello and thank you. I'm Tim Crook. I live at on Quince Avenue and I've lived there since 1991 and so I'm a citizen and a library patron. Just checked out a book from the library. <laughs> I was at the library a couple weeks ago uh, reading periodicals and I had like an aha moment. So I'm on the second floor and it's like this gloomy rainy night and it's packed up there. People at the computers, people at tables reading, people Cindy, reading periodicals. And I just said, you know, I, I was planning on speaking and I was said, you know, this is like perfect because this is what our new library can bring, a place for people to go and be like that. And I, I was just over there and I ran into a friend of mine. He's a retired Boulder High teacher and he was meeting a student that he was tutoring over there. Perfect, you know. So I've also noticed because I've li walked by Crestview Park almost every day. You don't need a survey to see the generational changes in North Boulder. That park is packed with young families and children. They're gonna use the library. And uh, if you go to the library right now, especially on Saturday morning, you're, you might have to walk very carefully because you might step on a young child. And that's not a compl <laughs> complaint. It's actually a very good thing because the library is so busy, all these kids are there, and if you go in there, you have to practice your mindfulness so you don't step on somebody. But with the new library, there'll be plenty of room for kids to go, and they'll be like the children in this book that I just read called The Library. And that book ends with the author talking about going to the library with her mom as a young girl and walking up to the librarian with her stack of books. And that's what's gonna happen at this library. So, thank you very much. Cool, thanks Tim. And you get an award for finishing quicker. <clears throat> so Adelaide Pear, then Brett Sacek, and then um, Georgia Morgan. <coughs> Sorry. Hi, I'm Adelaide Pear. I live at 4524 14th Street, which faces the proposed um, library. Well, not everyone can make it tonight because people have jobs and travel. There are currently over 70 residents who are very concerned about this library location. Um, and we have lists of names. The proposal I find to be an insult to the neighborhood and quite honestly to the planning board too. There are a lot of lies and realities that are being ignored when the proposal was submitted. Contrary to submission notes, this is not in keeping with the subcommunity plan. The subcommunity plan when we purchased our properties was to have 14th connected all the way through to Violet and not to have a street going between 13th and 14th right in front of our condos. The community, excuse me, the community input given to the library for these engagement projects is also completely flawed because when they went around to our neighborhood and asked, they said, it's either going to be condos or it's going to be a library. Wouldn't you prefer a library? And so the results that they got aren't accurate. The traffic plan is flawed. None of the comparable streets listed in the traffic plan have choke points. Our streets, all of them in that residential neighborhood have choke points where people park and at an angle and it narrows the street significantly. They anticipate 80% of the car traffic coming down Rosewood, which is already an extremely dangerous intersection. And that intersection does not have any plans to have a traffic light installed. So that will put a lot of people at risk, especially cyclists coming up north on Broadway. They wrote in the proposal that they anticipate having a designated staff member to encourage non-auto access to the library. Considering the library is under budget restraints already, I think that's a placating statement. Furthermore, they anticipated 1,000 cars a day down that 13th, 14th street, that's supposedly a Wooner street where nobody's gonna go, um, is gonna make it really hazardous for pedestrians and cyclists and all vulnerable road users on, for, people who are on Broadway, Violet, 13th, 14th, and Yarmouth. Um, again, as neighbors who face the proposed site, we have additional concerns. We have concerns about privacy. All of our windows face that direction and uh, with noise and also with light pollution. Even with blackout blinds, 
our place is still pretty bright at night, and so um, any additional lighting to keep the place safe for other people who use the library is gonna negatively affect us. Thank you. Great, thanks Adelaide. Brett Sawcheck, then Georgia Morgan, and then Amy Roberts. Hello everyone, Hello. my name is Brett Sawcheck. I am a CU grad of environmental sciences. I've been in town here for 13 years, never left. And I've been in this community in North Boulder for about three years now. I am at the epicenter of this project. I live on the bottom corner unit of the 13th Street Roundabout. And never moving in here would I have guessed that we'd be proposing a building like this. Mm -hmm knowing that when I moved in, there was a smaller proposed library. So <laughs> when considering the surveys that went underway with the, both the site and the traffic, just by reading over them, I'd have to say that uh, site one, which we are considering site two is what you're looking at, Site one was at the crossroads of Broadway and Violet. The way they construed the data was that site one was never even considered. It was always going to be site two. Being that this is a small area and we're talking about wrapping a road around our condos just feet from our front doors, a car a minute during working hours and only working hours would be roughly a quarter of a million cars a year annually going by our front doors. And whether the traffic study says it or not, our, our neighborhood is at capacity with parking. It's a small place. Uh, this site is at the dead end of our neighborhood. If 14th Street does not go across, we have two dead end roads waiting to be developed on 14th, both on Violet and coming from Rosewood. And this is a real problem. Um, I think a site with a traffic light where you have a realistic vision of there will be cars going to this site shouldn't be navigated and squeezed through a neighborhood by goodwill. You're gonna ask people to bike and not drive. Uh, let's see, the response to privacy concerns being that our front, our living rooms and our bedrooms are facing this wall uh, has been to create an observation deck is what we're seeing with this plan looking into our bedrooms. This is 30 feet away from our, our, our mirrored glass. And as far as the trailer park goes, this winter during the library commission meetings, they had stated that they had not addressed the trailer park, which they're saying this is their main focus group, are the Hispanic in the trailers. That land has not been discussed for either property. They said in the 80s. You need they, to go ahead and wrap up, thanks very much. In, in the 90s, 20 something years ago, they had a conversation that didn't go well about this property <clears> and <throat> they killed the conversation since then. So I don't think they've taken Brett, it that's seriously it. Thanks at all. Very much. Thank, you. Thank you. Georgia Morgan, Amy Roberts, and then Laura, no, we're done then. No. Oh, we got some more? Okay, great. If you haven't signed up, this is a good time to do it. Hi, um, my name's Georgia Morgan. I'm a teacher at Boulder Journey School, which is just down the road from the current Nobo Library on Yarmouth. Um, and the class of four-year-olds that I work with takes a weekly walk there, and they feel really connected to the space and to the librarians. And they were really excited to hear about the possibility of a new building, and also that they might be able to have a little bit of influence on a new building in their community. So I'm just here to speak on behalf of some of our younger citizens that don't always have a chance to um, voice their opinions. So <coughs> they wanted to share their support for this project um, in the building of a new library. They identified some wants and needs that the current Noble Library just doesn't have the capacity to meet. Um, the playground was very important to them. Having a community garden and a place that could be both beautiful and functional and possibly provide for the community um, and 
they they all really identified that something that makes Boulder so special is that it's so dog friendly. So having the possibility of that dog park on Violet and having that connect to the library, they really loved that idea. Um, and just speaking as an advocate for early childhood education as a whole, I think that having free and public spaces that support the education and the well-being of all children, not just children enrolled in early childhood programs, is really crucial. And I think a bigger space could provide a lot of opportunities for children in the community. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Georgia. Amy Roberts, then Kurt Nordbeck, and Christine English. Okay. Let's see. Have we started? Okay. Um, let's see. I believe if we ask the poorer residents and the Latino residents if they want a library in their neighborhood or if they want an RTD bus pass that will get them and their kids not just to the library but also get them to work, grocery stores, doctor's appointments, then I believe they'd answer a bus pass. Um, in the last meeting that I attended, the architect said that Boulder asked them for an iconic building. Cool, I'm all for our uh, amazing architecture. But how about function first? Ask the residents if they want transportation and safety above a library. I'm gonna say it's probably transportation and safety. Um, I suggest Boulder be a progressive icon by providing bus passes and a homeless day shelter. Even Nederland gives bus passes. I think we can be more iconic than Nederland. Um, let's see. So I own property there right at where this library is gonna be. I've been here since 90, 1998. Um, this, this library will be near the homeless shelter. And during the day, there are homeless people everywhere, um, all around. Um, drug use is high there. There was, um, I found a, a, a needle in the creek just in front of our place. Um, so I know how everybody is NIMBY, not in my backyard, but I would prefer a homeless day shelter. You know what a library cannot provide? Psychological services, security persons trained for homeless people's needs, food, medical care. Um, Boulder is supposed to be iconic and we're supposed to care about the people. That's kind of what we're labeled as, um, this liberal enclave. Um, so I also wanted to know, and I'm not aware about what is happening up at the um, Armory, so that's something that I would like to know as maybe if that's a possible place for a library and a day shelter for homeless. Um, I also suggest that this maker space that we're hearing about be up by the actual artists that are in those um, like storage buildings that have artist studios where we go there for Nobo First Fridays. Um, those people would actually know which tools are needed so that they could pool their tool use and save Boulder's money by having just the tools that are required instead of being redundant. Um, I believe that Boulder is talking about not having the funding for such a huge library. And I believe that I think libraries are great. We could have a smaller library and put the maker space where it's needed put money to a homeless day shelter and get RTD passes to people who need them. Um, two seconds. Thank you very much. Okay. Great, thanks Amy. Then, so we've got Kurt, Christine English, and then um, Allison Randall. Hi, Kurt Nordbeck speaking on behalf of Community Cycles. We uh, always comment uh, strictly on transportation and circulation issues. Our charter prevents us uh, from taking positions on other issues, although they may be very important. Uh, our main concern is the access off of Broadway for b both bicycles and for ADA. Uh, so th as shown, there's a, there's a large uh, set of steps there which would be dangerous and problematic for bicycles, obviously. The main bicycle access, it seems to me, is along the multi-use path around, looping around and coming around to the front. We would prefer instead of the, the level plaza and then the stairs, we would rather see the entire <coughs> connection there be <coughs> excuse me, be at a continuous grade. Um, and hopefully that would still be usable as a plaza. 
Uh, the new renderings did show an ADA ramp there. Maybe that would work if it was wide enough, but <clears throat> this, the, the existence of the stairs could be problematic, especially at night, certainly for bicycles and for people in wheelchairs and so on. Uh, we are concerned about the large corner radius at 13th and the new street, which seems like it deserves a name, although it doesn't seem to have a name. Uh, and so we're concerned that that will allow for excessively high speeds coming around there. This new street should be a pedestrian oriented street, and that means that everything possible should be done to calm traffic. Along those lines, it's proposed a 24 foot width, which seems excessive. 18 foot width allows for two nine foot lanes, and that would help to calm traffic also. Um, and there's, there's no crossing shown of the street to the blocks to the north. If it's really pedestrian, that's okay, but it needs to be really calm in order to make it a pedestrian dominant street. Uh, th some possibility, it seems to me, was, was raised of making the new street one way. We would generally prefer two way to prevent turnarounds and also to help calm traffic. Finally, although we did not take a position on this, so I can't speak for the organization uh, in this, it, in, on this subject, but in general, we prefer greater connectivity as long as the connectivity, the, the, the connecting streets are calm, low traffic, pedestrian friendly. And so that speaks a little bit to what some of the residents have talked about with regards to the extension of 14th to Violet. I think in general, we would appreciate that. Great. Thank you. Thanks very much, Kurt. Kristen English, then Allison Randall, and if there's any uh, one else who wants to sign up, um, you got two, three minute chunks before you lose your chance. Hi, uh, my name is Kristen English. Um, I'm a property owner in North Boulder. Um, I have two young kids; um, they're two and seven, and I'm speaking on behalf of a lot of families who can't make it here because this is the witching hour, um, and it was hell to get here. <laughs> um, so. On behalf of all those hundreds of families that can't be here, um, we, Boulder is becoming a very unfriendly city for families. Like there is just not enough stuff to do with kids. And the library is amazing. It is like the stronghold of this city for children, our parents who have children. And I can't say how grateful we are to have this project moving forward because I mean, the library is like, I mean, it, yeah, it's just amazing. The makers, the maker space is amazing. Um, but I would, I would encourage you guys to consider, um, maybe having some specific maker space time or programming for the youth. Um, you know, cause I have a seven year old and it's, she likes to be in there, but it's also a little daunting with, you know, a lot of adults and stuff. So that's something to consider. Um, and um, I also wanted to maybe ask you to consider, you know, in terms of like supporting more cultural integration, not just on like their side, like on our side, like, you know, my children would like to learn Spanish, right? So we can, you know, like, it's just not, it's not their responsibility. It's also our responsibility. That's what I meant when I made that comment. Yeah. People didn't yeah. catch it, but totally. yeah. I know what I so meant. That's our, I gave and a we thumbs would love up, to do that. that. that really um, and then the last thing, like I, you know, I don't own a property right there, and so I understand other people have, you know, privacy concerns and stuff, but we're gonna ride our bikes. Dude, I do not wanna get in a car to go to this library. Like, that's the whole point of it, being a neighborhood library, is so that we can walk, we can ride our bikes, and not drive down to the to the downtown or the East Boulder or the South Boulder Library. So, um, yeah, so I just wanted to um, commend you all for bringing this project forward, and on behalf of all families with kids, Please don't kill this. <laughs> Please, we need more kid-friendly things in Boulder. Like there's plenty of adults here with lots of stuff to do for adults. So, thank you. Thanks, Christine. Allison Randall, and do we have another sign up there? City? So we get one more after that. Hi, 
I, I wasn't planning on speaking, and she said most of what I wanted to say, so I'll keep it short. But um, I, too, feel really strongly about the really lack of integration for the Hispanic community and the rest of Boulder here. I've lived in a lot of places, mostly in Texas, a long time on the border, and I feel like it's really a sad state here that people that I don't know, it's very, feels very segregated and it makes me sad. I talk to the schools about it a lot, I really struggle with it and I wasn't gonna speak until I looked around and realized everybody here's white and there's nobody speaking out for the Hispanic community right now except I saw Ms. Montoya. I saw your last name and thought maybe. Um, so I go to the North, 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 or the Nobo Corner Library now with my kids all the time. We also walk because there's no parking and we're okay with that and we just, we find that's okay. We don't wanna mess with the traffic either, just like Christine I think said. And so we walk there ourselves and we go there all the time and every time, lovely greetings, everybody's so wonderful. The place is packed and I love it when they have the Spanish lessons and my kids go in for Spanish story time sometimes and it's so happy and wonderful every time and welcoming, but it's tiny and the only reason we don't go more often is because of that and I am so excited to see the design. I really just came to check out the design tonight, wasn't gonna talk, but I, I understand everybody has problems with, you know, it's hard, growth is hard traffic and parking and all that is always a struggle and I get that um, but I think this is going to be so good for the community and for families and for the Hispanic community specifically and I'm just really excited about it I feel just like she said please don't end it this is wonderful and hopefully everybody else can end up happy with the final result so that's it cool thanks Allison Cher Clevenger Hi, thank you so much. Um, I am also a teacher at the Boulder Journey School down on Yarmouth. Um, I do work with Georgia in the same four-year-old classroom. And I just had a couple of um, additions that I wanted to say. Um, one being that our children actually are already using this space where the proposed library will be. We play down in the Violet Creek during the summer. We like to hike it um, when it's completely dry. Or during the winter when it's completely dry, we like to hike it. When In the summer when it is filled up, we um, splash around in it and play. The last three weeks we've been visiting the site and having to clean it up, it's full of trash. It's just not being used properly. So I think that um, it's important to say that the space is being used by our younger generation and they are caring a little bit more um, than the adults that are using this space. So providing um, something that is going to be useful for the community and for adults and children alike. Um, again, we do visit the small Noble Library. We love it there, we love the librarians there. Um, they're not open on Thursday and Friday, and we're very limited on when we can go because of the space, so we have to share that space with others such as infants. When the infants are there, we have to leave, so it becomes a challenge um, to ha allow this opportunity for the children to get outside into their community, to leave their school walls, and these are three and four year olds. Um, there's also Crested View, you know, there's so many schools around there that, that could benefit from being able to leave the school and uh, engage in their com community more. So thank you. Thanks. And then one last person, Sarah Kim. And then last call. Hi. Hi. Hi, um, I'm Sarah. I live on 13th and Rosewood. Um, I just wanted to say, you know, on principle, I, I don't really have anything against libraries. I think they offer great programs for our community, but I just ask that in terms of access, it be done responsibly, because it's hard to tell from these pictures, but 13th and 14th, um, they can barely accommodate two-way traffic as it already is, and um, they're, it, it's full. <laughs> so I think that access to and from the library, I feel like those streets are kind of being forced to fit into the proposal, but if you just if you just go there and drive, you can see very clearly that it's not meant for main traffic. It's it's barely accommodating residential traffic and parking. So um, if you know, please, the access could be figured out properly before, not just for the residents, but for the patrons, that they could go and leave safely. That would be really great. Thank great. you. Thanks very much. Okay, so that wraps up the public comment period of tonight's public hearing. Um, I think we should take a quick break and 
give everybody a second and come back and return the matter to the board and do our deliberations. Does that sound good for everybody? Sure. Sure. Cool. <clears throat> All right, five minutes.
Don't worry, they'll need a minute. Okay, thank you guys for quieting down and also being social during that little moment. Uh, so we are going to have our um, conversation with the project now. Again, it's not one that results in a decision or a vote from us. Um, it's more to give feedback to form the project as it moves along in the process. So um, we have two key issues in front of us right now identified by staff. One is really does it comply with the comp plan? And then two, does it meet the, um, is it consistent with the North Boulder subcommunity plan? And there's about um, you know 2,000 different subheadings under each of those things that we could talk about as well. So I think just to kind of focus the conversation under comp plan, we really need to focus on the concept um, review criteria. Um, and, uh, and I think also it's worth kind of just considering um, if this building is going to be facing future use review, maybe bringing up any kind of concerns you have about that as well. Um, and then the subcommunity plan is really more just focused on the subcommunity plan and its, its directives. Does anyone else want to add another um, key issue, or does that seem like an okay way to frame the conversation? That's good enough. Cool. So under the comp plan, who would to kick us off? We could start at one end to the other, or or I'd, volunteer. I'd be glad to. We'll start at that end. Okay. I, I'll just go this way, so you'll be next. Be ready. I'll be glad to go first. Um, I think that. Um, uh, the land use designation uh, and the zoning of the property um, are uh, appropriate uh, for this project. Um, it, uh, it, it does require a use review uh, in um, the MU2 zone, uh, so we will be looking at a use review. Um, but I do, I do feel like, uh, like this uh, public amenity does uh, fit in with uh, that uh, land use and zoning. Um, it's nice to see new library branches opening up when national trends are uh, actually showing uh, it difficult to keep uh, brick and mortar libraries, so that's, that's nice. I, I guess that's not really criteria based, but just a comment. Um, we reviewed uh, both the CIP and the library master plan in the last year uh, for funding for this project, so we've seen a lot of kind of preparatory work for this. Um, I, uh, I am, uh, from, a, from a circulation standpoint, uh, I understand the concerns about that access to the north. Um, I actually uh, wasn't all that familiar with the neighborhood, so I did take a site uh, tour, walked around, uh, and my initial reaction was, gee, a connector down to Violet, do we really need that? Isn't it kind of nice to not have all, all these streets? But I, I really see now how that could really relieve uh, the neighborhood to the north, so it would be nice if that can happen in the future. Um, in the meantime, I, you know, the Meadows Shopping Center isn't, or the Meadows uh, branch isn't too far from where I live, and that also has kind of a, a funky uh, uh, access, and it doesn't create too many problems, but it is, you have to kind of go through what almost feels like a, a driveway situation to get there. Uh, I guess library goers kind of are, are fairly well behaved, and uh, so, um, I don't. I, I hope that I, I can understand. I, I hope that uh, at site review, maybe there can be some addressing of concerns around construction equipment during construction. Uh, it's always nice if you can think about ways that you can uh, keep the impacts on neighbors down. Um, let's see the uh, um, community cycles comments about the east-west bike connection. Um, I, I would think about that um, on the north side. Uh, I know that there's a cool design here, uh, and that is probably a lot of the reason why you have steps and things, but, uh, but it, it would be uh, convenient to have a kind of a direct east-west connection on that side, because we know that bikes tend to like to use the shortest path uh, to get through. Um, I do, uh, I kind of, you know, as I was looking at the design, um, I know that that's one of the criteria that staff thought could maybe use a little more attention to assure that it is in line with the comp plan. And I'm not an architect, but um, I happen to really, uh, some of the things I really like uh, internationally building-wise are sloped roofs that go down to the ground level. And I think like the um, Opera House in Oslo or, or that, uh, uh, Nemo Science Museum in Amsterdam, they, they're, they're really cool modern ideas that can uh, 
really activate the imagination. And with the green roof built in, I just think there is a lot of potential there. So I actually was really kind of thrilled with the look of this uh, building, the kind of the con conceptually. So I'm looking forward to seeing more in terms of what the materials will be like and how, how that will look in the end. Uh, but I would encourage continuing to go down the path of figuring out how uh, that green roof can be activated uh, nicely and how it can blend into the surroundings. I, uh, like I say, I've seen how, how well that can work. Uh, and um, from a, from a uh, co uh, community amenities standpoint, uh, the community gardens and the playground uh, will add uh, a, lot of, uh, in, uh, a lot of opportunities, uh, which we've heard a lot of people comment on. Uh, can I go on just a little bit longer? I, there, Please, yeah. I, I know I'm going on, uh, but then I won't have anything more to say. But, uh, but um, there was one comment from the Mary Hart letter on uh, uh, addressed to us, uh, and um, Mary wasn't here to speak, I guess, but uh, in her letter she talked about being aware of the land from an indigenous population standpoint. Uh, since this is a public amenity, I would encourage us to go do a little research, see if there is any uh, any record of, uh, of how this land may have been populated uh, before the Westerners arrived in this region. And if that can be honored in some way at the building, at the final product, um, that would be an educational thing for the community and a way to show that we respect uh, the land that we occupy here. So that would be um, of interest. Thank you. Um, so actually I'm gonna pause for a second because I forgot to ask everyone if they had any um, ex parte contact that they wanted to disclose or anything like that. And mine was just the site tour. Okay. Um, I do, in terms of, <clears throat> I went to the uh, one of the library public engagement meetings and saw the presentation there. Um, and then I you know, live in the neighborhood, I'm very familiar with the site. And then also I need to disclose that my sister works for the library in the Boulder Reads department. So I will advocate for all kinds of Boulder Reads things unbiasedly. Well, I can say that uh, I, I live not too far from there and have talked about this with neighbors for the last 10 years, I think. Uh, but I feel that I can uh, deal with this issue in an impartial and objective manner. Okay, sorry about that. Would be done. So this be my very first meeting. I, um, I concur with a lot of what he said, but I wanted to add a few things that I it didn't, occurred to me when I was reading to the descriptions and the plans, and one of them was the whole issue of light pollution. That's I thought very interesting, because I hadn't thought about it, and I did not hear much about from the architects or the planning, whether, uh, in fact, light will be a problem in this, um, in this location. And um, that will be something that I would like to understand better. Um, and if there is something just like with the traffic, which I think is a legitimate concern, um, whether there is something that can be done to be am ameliorate this problem, if in fact it, it is a possibility. That's something, like I said, it kind of caught me off guard. Um, given that I have lived in you know places with a lot of light and moving from California to upstate New York, I went from a lot of light to no light and I was <laughs> kind of scary. Uh, so I can imagine that that being a possibility of a problem. Um, um, I appreciate it also that from the cyclist uh, um, gentleman, um, with regards to the better access um, that maybe the uh, replacing the, um, the steps with a ramp it may actually be uh, an improvement. And you know, I believe you had in mind doing a, a ramp at some space anyways, but I'm wondering if that will be um, in a good way to address that that part, I hadn't you know seen that. Um, I liked um, to just mention um, the idea of seeing this place up as an opportunity for really integrating communities that don't integrate very well in this community, and I would like people to give that a little bit of thought and potentially a, a value because we have learned with time to give value to the environment, which I'm an environmental engineer, and when I started along this path, people did not value the environment, and all of a sudden now people seem to do. But there are other things that are also should be valued, and that is integration of communities to create a real community. Um, I hope to see improvements if this goes forward, 
But it's certainly in all of the people that come is, you know, how can we create something bigger if this moves forward with the communities that are present? Because we do have a, you know, distinct communities within Boulder and uh, being progressive um, really means a lot of things for different people. And so I would like that we can potentially see this uh, a new way of bringing everybody together. Um, but certainly addressing the needs of the community that are you know, most impacted, the neighborhoods. Although we only heard about one neighborhood, I yet to hear the neighborhood of Boulder Meadows. Um, so that will be a voice that I would like to eventually hear more directly. Great, I'll just call myself next. Um, so I think, um, yes, I find that the um, proposal is consistent with the Boulder Valley Comp Plan. Um, and uh, I do think that the um, that the proposals uh, compatible with the planning and, or the zone districts that are applied to the property as well. Um, I think in terms of site configuration, um, the overall site configuration I think is really positive. I think that uh, locating the axial entry on 13th Street makes a lot of sense. Architecturally, that still needs to be worked out. I think quite a bit. It's right now an opening, and that's cool. But I think there's you know time to go in the process, and I think that's something that wants to shift a little bit. Um, the uh, parking lot on the west side, to me, seems like it's a little space if, uh, um, inefficient. Um, if it turned west into... West or east side? Did I say west? Yeah. Everybody See, you got the me. Yeah. <laughs> so on the east side, um, if it turned into a north-south drive lane with, you know, stalls on both sides, it would actually be, I think, a little more efficient, and it might be a... Um, you know, maybe you lose a stall or two, but I think that would be okay in the context of how much um, open space you would get back. Right now, it's a high ratio of drive lane to, to um, parking stalls. Um, I do think that the uh, um, east-west connection is really important, and I think keeping it two-way and also keeping it tight to 20 feet is important. I would consider even maybe locating um, parallel parking along the north side of it to help calm that a little further, possibly. Um, and that might get you a few stalls that you lose in the east parking lot if you if you get into that um, previous comment I made. Um, I think planning for the 14th Street connection through is super essential, although it's, I know, completely outside of the purview of this project to try to make that happen. It's good for the city to be pursuing it. Um, and if they can make it work, that's great. If you can acquire that parcel, that's great and um, create a little more space for the library, super cool. Um, but it, that's not really a criteria upon which we could um, justify denying a project like this. Um, other comments on the site planning, um, I know it's early days on this, but the um, amount of connectivity inside to outside, both in the main adult area and kids areas facing towards the creek, I think needs to be explored a lot more and like what happens on the ground plane out there. Um, the nature of the plaza on the north side, I think is also a real question to me. Right now the sort of street trees march along the edge of the drive lane and you know the the organization of the stairs and a ramp next to that I think is fine, but I would actually, um, I think that's just the very beginning of the design process. And so I think as you develop that, um, really looking at like, how are those stairs possibly a very cool thing? How is it really wonderful to ride a bike through there from Broadway along the north side of the building? Um, and then in terms of bike parking, uh, you know, the conventional city of Boulder inverted U thing is kind of one way of doing that. Um, it might be good to consider the fact that 80% um, of the bikes that are going to be there are going to either be electric bikes or ones with burleys on the back with a bunch of moms and kids. And so they need a lot of backing space off of them. And you probably need a lot more, actually, than you're looking for right now um, because there's a lot of bike riders who will attend this, uh, this library. Um, in terms of building form, um, I really support the shape of the building and the general gestures. I think the... Um, the quieter, harder edge to the north and to the east makes a lot of sense. I think that uh, currently shown as a corrugated kind of concrete wall could be materially a lot of different things. Really interesting. And I mentioned it when I was talking to you at the uh, um, at the uh, engagement meeting that rammed earth could be a cool possibility, but I'll mention it here as well. Um, and I think sort of stepping down towards the north is a really good way to respect the neighbors. And then just one comment actually on the, both for the public and for you, Lupita, the, um, the dark skies ordinance is being applied in the city across the board. So really every light fixture has to be fully veiled and there's essentially a maximum amount of light that can be cast on the floor on the ground plane. 
and the buildings can't be illuminated and you can't cast light skyward. So there's some very um, strict regulations in place as of now, uh, or as of like whatever, 17 years ago, they're now <laughs> being applied to everybody. <laughs> and it's not just not skyward, it's not across a property line. Right, yeah, fully veiled across property lines. Um, so I think the architecture has really developed quite a bit since the first things we saw from the library presentation. Um, I think the opening of the spaces and the com combining of those is really great. The expression of the cooling towers and the passive elements, both the shading that's happening on that south facade um, and the ability to use those cooling towers, I think is really great. Um, and I think that the building has a, a potential to be an excellent uh, interpretive experience about passive environmentally sound architecture. So I really, really like hearing that and I'd love to see that happen um, all the way through uh, to culmination, including, you know, all the way through the signage and stuff like that, which if you do, you know, lead or things like that, you may end up um, having a bunch of little placards that say stuff like that all over the place. Um, trying to think if there's anything else that's sort of like essential before I stop talking about this. That's really in terms of site configuration and, and building form. Um, and I would just want to echo what these guys said in terms of you know, seeing if there's a way for us to honor the Native American history there and, and to really follow through on the community integration part. And some of the projects I've worked on that involve a um, high percentage of Hispanic populations, we have been approached by non-Spanish speakers with the same request that one of the members of the public said, which is like, we would love to speak Spanish. It's not just incumbent on them, the them, to do what we're doing, but we should be able to um, meet them halfway. So I really appreciate hearing that set sentiment. That's it. Brian, um, so I, I, I agree that the, the um, concept does uh, show consistency with the Boulder Valley Comprehensive Plan, um, you know, to the extent that, that it stretches. Um, I'm going to uh, address uh, some of the goals and policies that are up there in 2.37 environmental sen environmentally sensitive urban design, 2.40 design excellence for public projects, and 6.12 transportation impact mitigated leads me to um, suggest that this application could possibly go uh, further and um, meet the comprehensive plan in a variety of additional ways. Um, so let's start by um, getting my personal opinion out of the way, which is that it's an amazing design. Um, and I think Boulder's a world-class city that's beset by um, quite a lot of blocky buildings, and it's nice to see some angles that are different for once, and a uh, green roof, and walking around on the green roof, you know, um, these are dreams of Hunter Wasser. It's a, it's a cool idea. Um, so let's look at the zoning. In, in mixed use two, it includes residential. We don't have any on the site. And I think that taking Brian's idea of, of uh, making the parking area more efficient, uh, I think here we have space for more affordable housing that we're not using on top of that parking lot. Um, we have an ambitious goal in the city of Boulder to create 4,000 new uh, affordable housing units in the next 15 years, which is a lot. And we're not going to get there if we don't start uh, taking advantage of all the opportunities. Um, surface parking is certainly not a preferred use, and it does nothing to foment 15-minute neighborhoods. Um, a 10 or 15-unit apartment building on top of a parking lot uh, would comply with the goals of the comp plan, the zoning district, in our inclusionary housing program. Uh, I think you could tie the apartment building to the library architecturally uh, with a vaulted tapering green roof, requiring less treatment and detention of water than uh, the surface parking area would, um, and make it even more of a hundred Wasser village where there'd be two mountains to climb for the kids um, on the roofs. And under the vaulted roof can be the mechanicals and, and the other uses, which frees up maximum, sp maximum space at ground level for the parking. And, uh, and allows the maximization of the residential space on that second floor. And we wouldn't be looking at a huge amount of um, additional density. And I think with the additional parking spaces that you could get from not having to put in parking islands, landscape islands, uh, you might find that the, the parking underneath uh, the residential would uh, accommodate more parking spaces. Um, I think it would also do something to discourage vehicular use of the 13th, 14th connector. I mean, what if that was the drive aisle, the east-west drive aisle in the parking lot. You know, people wouldn't feel that it was a, necessarily a street um, if it were under a building as well. Um, so I think that all those comments um, also address um, affordable housing primarily. Uh, 
design secondarily, but we want a lot of affordable housing in Boulder. If you, uh, if you look at uh, the affordable housing goals and policies in the comp plan, they're all over the comp plan. So I'll just mention three of them, 1.10 jobs housing balance, 2.16 mul um, mixed use and higher density development, and 7.01 local solutions to affordable housing all would support this, uh, this concept. So I'm, I'm couching all of this in terms of consistency with the Boulder Valley, additional consistency with the Boulder Valley Comprehensive Plan. Great. John? <clears throat> well, uh, I'm, I'll focus my comments on the comp plan now with the understanding that we also get to talk about the uh, sub-community plan mm -hmm. subsequently. And the reason that's important to me is because it seems to me that it's very difficult to be consistent with the comp plan if we decide that something is not consistent with the sub-community plan. And I think there are several issues on the sub-community plan that we need to talk about to, to decide whether it is consistent or not. So with that said, I'll focus on the, on the comp plan issues. And there I think that uh, this uh, proposal, I, I think it's imaginative and I think uh, its objective is, is good and it's well suited to that location. But there are several concerns I have that make me think that it, without some changes, I don't think it would be consistent with the comp plan. And those changes are the 14th Street uh, continuation to, uh, to Violet uh, and the connection with the, uh, with the uh, uh, mobile home park to the east. I think that without those two elements, and I know that uh, they have been discussed in very general terms, uh, but uh, no, no indication has been made that, that those issues have been sorted out properly. Uh, I think without those two elements, uh, we can't, it doesn't, uh, doesn't seem to me to be environmentally sensitive urban design or uh, uh, appropriate uh, uh, design excellence because those are such fundamental issues. Uh, beyond that, I think uh, it's, it's good to have, a, you know, I'm, I'm in favor of having the library facilities there and I think the, the building as proposed is imaginative and attractive. But, uh, but I think without those two issues, uh, this is flawed. Uh, and I'll come back to talk about the uh, the, the uh, sub-community plan when we hit that point. Great. <clears throat> yeah, I think we, you, well, we'll get to kick that off. Oh, along. I get to move But not on. yet. Oh, right. um, actually, I want to, city staff, I want to ask you guys a quick question on the 14th Street connection. We sometimes run across this desire when we're doing site reviews or concept reviews to ask people to do off-site improvements. Do we really have the ability to hinge our approval on something like that? No. You don't. But there are improvements that can be made, um, and Hella can jump in mm -hmm. um, if I start misspeaking, but um, I think it depends on who the um, individual improvements serve. So you wouldn't be expected to build an off-site reg regional you know, um, bicycle connection, but if it affected your site, then you could be asked to contribute or, or construct. Fire department access or things like right. that? Okay, thank you. So there's a rough proportionality there that we exam examine as part of the review. Great. I, I point these things out not because we're, we're not approving something tonight, but we're pointing out issues that we think are important and need to be dealt with. So that's, that's my logic for, for doing that. Okay. Um, so does anyone else want to sort of add anything after hearing everyone else's comments on the sort of comp plan component before we move on to... I would just like to reinforce, because I didn't um, want to repeat, but now let me do it a little bit, and just reinforce what you said, Brian, about the passive elements and, and the educational opportunities, as well as the environmental opportunities that they provide. I think they're wonderful. Right. Oh, and, David? And, um, I, <clears throat> I'm sure that uh, this will be thought of, but um, things like, because it's a net zero building and also EV charging stations in the parking area, things like that. I think there's actually a requirement for that, but yeah. But the more the better. Um, yeah. Um, okay, so John, do you wanna kick us off on the um, question of whether the proposal is consistent with the North Boulder subcommunity plan? 
I'm happy to. Uh, I'd like to start out by asking if staff has a response to some of the comments made uh, by the public with respect to whether this is land that was intended for a purpose like this according to the subcommunity plan, because my comments will focus partly on that. And Sloan, could you advance the slide to the North Boulder? Thank Sorry about that. Um, well, I guess what I would say is that the plan has been amended, I think, twice or three times. So um, I do think the vision has evolved over time for uh, specifically this um, village center use. Uh, initially, I think they were hoping to have a grocery store there. So after that was uh, determined not to be feasible, then they rethought what this area could be. Um, based on just the history of this property, it was actually obtained for library purposes prior to Uptown being constructed because the Uptown development received um, a density bonus based on this land donation. So I don't know the exact history of how the subcommunity plan was updated, but I do know that based on the initial subcommunity plan, the city went after this site for a civic use, and that was finalized in 1999. So is that, was there any other aspects that? Well, I think one or two people uh, tonight pointed out uh, in a map that this was designated as a village center uh, in the subcommunity plan. And of course, what, what that means is, is open to a lot of interpretation. So I'd be interested to know if well, there is a that very means open space or oh, okay so there is a very specific building. definition of what they envision through a village center um, so they were envisioning sort of a mixed use hub with residential along with civic uses along with commercial uses so the uptown development was intended to sort of start that center being established and if you look at page 16 of the North Boulder subcommunity plan under the village center development guidelines, mm -hmm. it states that we should be providing locations for a public library, transit center, police annex, and post office in the area. Okay, so it, it says explicitly it does. library mm -hmm. in that area. It does. Okay, that, uh, that gives me uh, some comfort then with respect to, to uh, whether this complies with the subcommunity plan. Um, I think in general it does. I think again, uh, the, the transportation issues that uh, several folks have pointed out uh, are, are significant enough that, that we need that connection to Violet uh, for it to, to be consistent with the subcommunity plan. Go for it. All right, so I, I, I found the, uh, the concept to be consistent with the North Boulder subcommunity plan. Um, I, I think that uh, I'd also like to highlight the, uh, the amount of, the number of times that uh, the village center development guidelines mentioned residential, both horizontal and vertical, and uh, use that as further support for the concept of uh, doing more than surface parking. Great, yeah, I'll, I'll be as, concise now as I wasn't before. Um, I think it does meet the um, requirements of the North Boulder Subcommunity Plan. It does explicitly call for a library in this location. And if you look at the map that's there, it does show um, a street connection south of most of the homes along the edge of the village green, um, except for one, one band on the far east side, got the east-west part right. So I think that um, while the uh, street arrangement has changed a little bit as the um, Transportation Master Plan and Connections Plan have evolved over the years. Um, I think this is this is consistent with that layout. And I would say, you know, I would never want to hang this project up on the acquisition of the um, storage parcel that's associated with the trailer park and the connection to Fort, uh, from 14th over to Violet. But I do think that that's something that should be stubbed out and prepared for. I'll be very brief because my. Colleagues have spoken much more eloquently about this. Um, I also found that the proposed project does meet the requirements, and as we've learned more specifically, there have been multiple changes, but certainly the, the mixed use is clearly um, delineated and approved in the past, so I'm 
seems to me that's clear that it does meet, um, um, and just not to go back to the comprehensive plan, but that there's definitely some things that need to be addressed, and that's good that they were brought up today. David? Um, yes, I'll, I'll agree with um, everything that's been said uh, with regards to uh, the Village Center development guidelines. Uh, there's a, there are a lot of um, features within this proposal that address uh, many of the things I read when I re read those guidelines. Um, I think that, uh, you know, the high quality uh, pedestrian access and circulation as well as uh, 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 vehicle circulation is a challenging area that we've talked about throughout. Um, I really liked, um, you know, Sarah Kim's comments earlier where uh, she, she acknowledged that and then asked to please pay attention and figure that out. I think, uh, I think that, you know, th it's important when you have something that is a little bit challenging to, to you know, really try to um, do the best to address that. And I'm sure that we'll, we'll see that in the site review. But yes, um, I think in, in general it, it, it meets those guidelines. Great, any, any last comments from anyone on the comp plan? Or sorry, on the uh, North Boulder Subcommittee plan? Okay, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and try to summarize uh, some of these comments. I won't catch everything. If you guys feel like I've missed something that's essential, please chime in after I'm done. Um, and then after I've rattled through what I think we've said. Can I just add one thing? Oh man, then I'll uh, ask you guys if you have any questions for us. Go ahead. Yeah, because I didn't wanna say it had to do with the North Boulder subcommunity plan. It's just a general comment. I think we may have left members of the public with the sense that our hands are tied because we, we, we can't make this project do anything uh, for producing that connection. And generally, we can require that a project uh, prove that it has legal public access, but this one already does, so we can't ask for more. On the other hand, that doesn't mean that we can't deny a project if the traffic impact can't be mitigated by the project proposal. So, you know, if the site review comes in front of us and it's, you know, got too much going on and not enough road to serve it, we do have the power to deny that project. So I, I just felt like we were leaving everybody with this taste like, you know, <laughs> this is gonna go through um, and we don't have leverage. We do, we do in the site review criteria. Okay, any other comments? Well, um, since Simon just spoke up, I'll just also say, I didn't hear anybody else echo. I, I thought those were quite innovative ideas that you had re with regards to uh, emphasizing the fact that this is a mixed use zone. And uh, if, if that could happen uh, to have uh, residential uh, in, in the next uh, version of this, um, I think that would be really amazing. So I, I'll, I would like to just kind of underscore that as well. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I, I totally agree with that as well. And I think, um, piggybacking on one of the members of the public's comments, and if it's not residential, it could also be a day shelter above there, so. There you go. Right, I, I, I would like to point that out, that the residential is one potential use of that, but uh, there's plenty of other uses that might be more appropriate, and I think it's up to the, uh, to the uh, applicant to, to consider that carefully. Yeah, cool, well, well spoken. Um, any other last things? Okay, so um, on the question of whether or not it complies with a comp plan, uh, everyone felt like yes, it does, um, that the you know, land use designations and the zoning are um, appropriate for this proposal. Uh, the east-west two-way, 20-foot wide connection uh, fire lane was supported, but there was a lot of interest in having the, uh, the design of the plaza fleshed out and to have um, essentially all of the sort of uh, traffic um, concerns and safety concerns mitigated through um, good design and through traffic calming through there. There's a lot of things you can do to slow cars down there and, and make it not feel like it's a, it's a freeway f whipping around those corners, um, knowing that many of those corners are formed by the uh, turning motions of fire trucks. Um, then uh, there's a lot of interest in having the 14th Street connection through uh, to Violet um, and sort of a mix of opinions on whether that's um, fully germane to uh, uh, approval. Um, and there's a lot of interest in a Boulder Meadows access, um, whether that happens through the uh, trapezoidal um, parcel or whether it happens over near um, where 14th and the East West Road um, have a corner or if there's some place that makes sense on Boulder Meadows um, we're kind of location in, um, agnostic on that. Um, 
I think in terms of architecture, everyone was pretty happy with the design. They felt like it was an excellent, environmentally sensitive urban design and well-suited with the location. It was imaginative and attractive, using John's words. Um, we liked the tapered roof connecting the ground plane and the green roof and the tiering to the north and the arrangement of uses on the site so that it places the quietest things most adjacent to the residential uh, homes, which makes a lot of sense. Um, and uh, the, in terms of cultural aspects, I think everyone loves the idea of this mix of services that are provided there um, with a focus on community integration, sort of both directions. Um, these things are not explicitly part of our um, criteria, but I think it's worth just sort of summarizing what we did say about it and the idea of doing um, something to honor the historical um, land ownership by Native Americans on the site would be great. And I don't know what that is, but I think uh, it wouldn't be a bad idea to talk to someone who um, would be more suited to that than this crowd. Um, and uh, under the use review concerns, I didn't hear anybody raise any questions with the use review. I think everyone felt like that's supportable when it comes around. Um, and I know it's sort of a formality because it's a parcel that's um, going to receive a municipal use. But um, and then in terms of compliance with the North Boulder Subcommittee Plan, I think everyone was um, quite positive that it does uh, comply with the comp plan. Um, and there was piggybacked on that, again, emphasis on the 14th Street connection through to um, Violet and also on the uh, overall site permeability and connectivity to Boulder Meadows. Did I miss anything that, um, actually, no, I was gonna add into that uh, Harmon's point about adding residential over a tray of parking on the east side of the parcel, because I think that fits into this North Boulder subcommittee plan uh, preconception of uses. I think we we thought that residential or other uses. Right, residential or yeah. other uses, yeah. Disco. Any questions from the applicant? I, um, again, David Farnan, Library and Arts Director, thank you all very much uh, for this thorough review. Um, and I, I didn't want to leave you thinking that we had not um, considered some of those uh, ideas. It was um, not my hope that we would do uh, a, struct a, a surface parking lot. Uh, we met with um, uh, two developers and spoke uh, further with a third about the potential for doing both housing and other uses above a structured parking. and. In fact, that makes um, parking much more affordable for me. Shared parking is a uh, is a great idea, and we close um, four nights a week at 8 p.m. and uh, weekends we close at 6 p.m. So there were a lot of advantages. Um, my understanding from those developers was the uh, the price of the parcel, the trapezoid, was um, prohibitive for one, and frankly, the cost of completing 14th Street with a bridge. Um, that needs to span quite a large area could be a price of something like three to four million dollars. And so it did not pencil out for them in any way. They could never find the amount of density on that site. And so all of those developers wished us luck. They said if something changes, they might be interested again. But as far as I know, I spoke to uh, all of the affordable housing developers in Boulder, the, most of the main ones, and one other um, private developer who's in North Boulder who had an interest in doing um, multiple kinds of uses on the site, including some affordable housing. So I wanted to make sure that mm -hmm. you understood that. Okay. Uh, 14th Street, obviously, we do not have any control over, but we have been in ongoing discussions with the owners of Meadows Mobile Home Park. He has assured me that a connection will occur. Um, we're looking at grading, and that's where the step comes from, the direct east-west parcel. It, the, the grading and also the siting of many of the homes that are there in Meadows Mobile Home Park prohibit it from going directly across, but somewhere below. Um, and he, I, I think, has given us assurances that he's willing to pay for that connection um, and keep it clean during winter months. And so I, I, I want you to know that we're, we have, that's been a critical part of this idea for at least two years, and so we have met with them multiple times, and they're totally down with um, connecting. They, they understand the value to their residents as well. So. Yeah. Um, just uh, because we did, when, just to clarify what David was saying, we laid out typical residential footprints um, working with those developers, uh, and uh, we were not able to fit it just on the parking lot site. It, we, it would require the acquisition of the trapezoidal parcel, even just to get one 15,000 square foot mm -hmm. building in there. So, Doesn't mean we'll surrender, but yeah. uh, you know, I, the, 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 the trapezoid is a, and I, I know the city is interested in the property and continues to express an interest in that property. So 
question. Have you um, spoken with Kurt Fernhaber in the yes. housing? Yes, okay. yeah, that's and where we started. Uh, and he's the one who gave us the names of the developers. Okay. I, went, I went from there, I reached out to a number of them. We had multiple meetings with a couple. One, one specifically was very interested and thought the project might be doable. They went to um, penciling it out and it did not. A second developer also did. Um, that was one from more of a mixed use. Um, and it did not pencil out for him either without selling some major portions of it for like, I don't know, I'm assuming big condos or something, I don't know. Well, I have to say that um, it doesn't surprise me that you already thought of that because this reminds me of when you came in front of us for the library master plan update and we peppered you with questions for what seemed like two hours. <laughs> Many of the questions had nothing to do with the scope of your master plan update and you just answered every single one of them with aplomb. So yeah. continue to be very imp yeah, impressed I mean, the with uh, what you're doing. A lot, you know, a lot of the value, we, we understand completely the value of the housing uh, thing and making sure that happens. And, and that's really, that's good for library soup, right? The more mm -hmm. um, we can bring people closer together to the library, that's what makes for a great mm -hmm. library. So um, connecting the meadows is a critical element of this and it will happen, I guarantee you, yeah. Thanks. Thank you. And also having residential wrapping around there does a great job of having eyes on the street, so it's a really good safety factor as well. So yeah. the library soup idea is really wonderful. So um, Sloan, Charles, Hall, did we not answer any questions you guys felt like we needed to answer for you to inform the process? Yeah, I think we're clear. Yeah, okay, great. cool. All right, great. Well, we will close that um, public hearing item, which is the only one we have for the night, and then move into matters from the planning board. Um, a couple information items? Yeah, we have two informational items. And the way these are set up right now, folks, is that we have, um, there's no uh, city, or, yeah, city staff presentation that goes along with those informational items. They're just for us to read. If you have any questions after you've read those, you can ask Hella. She's informed on both of those items. And also, if you come up with some questions later on, you can always email them and find out more. So anybody have any questions on the two informational items, which are both right away vacations? Uh, I have a... A process question: mm -hmm. uh, Is is there? Is it only the city council that has to approve uh, vacations? Correct. Yeah. Planning board has no role in that. Just uh, just notification. Yeah. Uh -huh. oh. All right. Well. Thanks. Cool. So uh, I don't hear any more questions coming out about the informational items. Um, so we'll move to item seven: debrief meeting and calendar check. Um, I think we have at least one thing we wanted to talk about, which is the um, board retreat agenda, um, which we'd have sort of a preliminary conversation about tonight, but we are lacking two board members, so um, we wouldn't really get full impact on that. So, Cindy, is there anything else under um, calendar check or anything like that with, for you? Um, no, there okay. isn't. Our next meeting will be on the 18th of April, and um, no, I don't have anything. Do, um, do you know if we have any absences predicted for that meeting? Uh, as far as I know, we have a full board. Okay, great. So I think maybe we can um, do a light touch on the agenda tonight and just sort of introduce the idea and talk about it more when we have a full board. Does that sound fi fair to everybody? Um, so Cindy's provided us with the um, agenda that we had last time. You can also, if you wanted to see them, see the agendas going back into the previous millennia, I'm sure if we want to. Um, some of the things that we try to stay abreast with on these retreats is anything that's sort of big and moving parts that are happening with the city. So sometimes we'll get a city a staff update on, um, you know, key, um, key projects that affect us. You know, right now there's a list of about 50 different initiatives going on with the city that have some sort of planning board involvement. So sometimes these are pretty quick little um, skipping stones across the water kind of updates. And then we do receive regular updates on all the projects that are ongoing, so we'll, we'll get that sort of in this kind of a format, typically, after a meeting. Um, often we'll have conversations around um, how we are facilitating our own meetings, how we're handling meetings, what we're, you know, how we're functioning as a board. Um, and I think happily the board's been functioning really well. Um, so we, that's another possibility. Uh, the last one, we had a really wonderful presentation by a woman named Reagan Bird. Um, who is really focused on social justice um, and how this board can be maybe a, a better ally for uh, minorities and um, folks facing oppression in our communities, which I think was a really effective presentation. I don't know if we, we want to do that again or not. 
Um, and then sometimes we do sort of a walking tour of the place that we're in. Um, the retreat's gonna be held up in Holiday Neighborhood um, at Wild Sage Co-Housing, which is where I live. Um, and if people want to, we could do a walk around in the neighborhood as well. So Great. other ideas for this or other things you wanna talk about? Well, I just think that um, one of the things that we did last year that I'd like to repeat um, is just to go over uh, motion making mm -hmm. and and really just make it simple. You know, how do you make a motion? How does it pass or fail? And how do you change it? What are the methodologies for adding or subtracting or amending to yep. a motion? And how to craft and, a good condition? Yeah, and I, I think just that's that's just a half hour conversation and some notes that folks can take. That's a good reminder. Um, because I think it gets confusing as to what's a, you know, a resolution at the end of a motion, what's a friendly amendment, you know, these are, these are things that are, are just, be, it would be nice if everybody felt comfortable with that. And I forget how to do that, uh, you know, the vagaries of all those things are, are opaque to me sometimes too. Yeah, and we, we do practice a fairly light version of Robert's rules here, yeah. so. Has, has anyone ever done a flow chart of motion making? I mean, it just seems to lend itself mm -hmm. to. Yeah. Boxes and arrows. If then, then go there. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't. Have one. It's, a, it's a good idea. I haven't seen one. There probably is one. If you you know five seconds on Google. How oh, want to yes. start drawing? <laughs> <laughs> Words, not drawings. Apparently. Maybe I'll start with Google. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lupita, as a new board member, do you have anything that you'd like to um, that you feel like you're sort of facing as like a aside from everything, like, oh my God, I'm on this board, what are we gonna do? And at the retreat, we can talk about a lot of those things. So we've got two board members that we will help on board through this process. I can get a little uh, feedback on that day because mm -hmm. I think I got a really good idea now how I'm supposed to phrase things. I have my opinions, but I should have prefaced saying which one of the, um, the policies I needed to be, and thank you very much because I got it after a couple of times I heard it. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do much better next time, but I really appreciate it. You're doing great. Yeah, you guys did a good example, set a good example of that, especially like you, Harmon, on that. Yeah, I wander all over the place as well. So, um, but I also know, so you notes because I, I took my notes and I highlight things, and I took, now I better prepare to write what I'm going to say in accordance with the language, and I yeah. really appreciate that because that, that's. I want to come across just like you guys did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you're, it's great. you're doing great. It was a, a good first day. And I think, you know, one of the things that's really it shows to the public and to staff and to each other that if you've read the materials and you're familiar with the documentation, that you don't have to be pointed to things in the packet. And, you know, we'll all do that sometimes. I'm, I know I've done it before. Mm -hmm. I'm like, do we have this or do we have that? And they're like, well, if you look on page 12, Actually, it's right there. Usually it's like paid 812 though, so. <laughs> I know. I was initially thinking of printing everything. I said, I can't do that. But at least I got the first packet because I was highlighting everything. Yeah. And, 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 now, and electronics, I, I need to see things quickly. Mm -hmm. So even if I read electronics and I highlight it there, it still doesn't feel the same way as if I have some of it at least handy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, everyone will share with you their little tips and tricks for how they manage things. I, yeah. I got my sort of routine figured out. Everyone's got a little different of a setup. Yeah. Um, and you, I mean, you'll see use reviews where there's going to be a 185-page traffic study that's full of charts. Well, and the frank, you know, frankly, I'm not a traffic engineer. I'm looking at Ella, Ella when I say this. I read every number in those traffic uh -huh. reports. I, uh -huh. but, I mean, I do have a question for you because they they mentioned that you know this this a thousand uh, two hundred fifty thousand uh, trips uh, in that area in one year. Two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. So it's a, you know almost a thousand, uh, uh, you know, per day. Well, that, that the, didn't sound right to me. Your skepticism but is well founded. I, th I think. I wonder if we should talk uh, further. We should adjourn, and we can continue the discussion. Uh, and the we would then get to notice the meeting separately, so we can have a more than two-person conversation, John. But if you think we should truncate that, I, I get where you're coming from. Um, but yeah, I think it is important to. Uh, uh, sort of fact check things that are said from all perspectives. Yeah, but the people to fact check with the people that were here before. Mm -hmm. so yeah, city staff, I mean, they, their job is to know this stuff um, and they are, you know, relentless in their <laughs> in their research and their knowledge. Yeah. It's, it's kind of amazing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's likely that there's a high number, but 
a lot of it would be related for the traffic there. Yeah, it, I think it's a part. I mean, just to like, we shouldn't be talking about that. No. That uh, specific case, although it's still early, I guess. Well, I will I'll, I'll say in general, I have been surprised at uh, some high traffic counts uh, that I've looked at uh, that seemed higher than I would have thought. Yeah, well, uh, but I think when I think when you count the cars over a day, sometimes the numbers just end up being higher than you think they're going to be. Well, and also, you know, these traffic counts are based on an engineering manual called the ITE manual. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, the ITE manual says that any household will produce 9.54 trips per day. And, you know, it, it, a lot of times if, you know, you and your husband both have a car and you go to work and he goes to work and you work in two different places and then you both come home, that's four trips. Four, yeah. So sometimes the numbers are high yeah. Yeah. in reality. Yeah. Just, just, to, just a frame of reference, um, Broadway, or sorry, not Broadway, uh, 28th Street and um, Iris, mm -hmm. that intersection sees 67,000 vehicle trips per day. So that's in like an actual count. In an actual count, not a not a model, mm -hmm. right. and if you multiply that times 365, which is probably not quite right, you get 24 million. Yeah. So. But that intersection is is those are major throughways. It's pretty much hard city. to beat that one, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so those are one of the worst places. But yeah, yeah. It, I can see how. That's why I was thinking how the calculation was done because I know that these numbers can be figured out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. I was surprised more than anything because mm -hmm. it may be true. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. So what else should we, I mean, should we just sort of like uh, call it a day here or do we have other ideas for the agenda or just want to talk about it when we have the full board when we come back? What do you guys think? Well, Cindy, did you ask us to email you ideas for the agenda? Um, I seem to think that you maybe did, but maybe. You certainly can. <laughs> maybe you didn't. Please, please give your name and address when you, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We've done that in the past. Oh, but you didn't say that this Start time. to put together an agenda. And then I can um, also start to, I'll filter out um, to all of you the ideas that have been sent in. And correct me how if I'm wrong, if I, I'll send it out to the whole board so everyone's notified at the same time. And as you send in your requests, send it to the whole board so everyone's notified at the same time, correct? I mean, they won't send me an email personally. They would send it to the whole board of their agenda ideas. You're looking at me like you don't know what yeah, it's yeah, it's, yeah, it shouldn't be a back and forth. Yeah. I'll put, I'll put we can and then whoever wants to discuss, then, then we'll figure out probably at the next meeting who wants to discuss what item. Yep, so if that's not clear, like basically we can email the planning board list um, ideas for uh, agenda items, but you can't respond to someone else's email, so it's not a dialogue that's happening. It's not a um, chain meeting. So I guess I'll throw one out. I, I don't know that I'd want to necessarily have Reagan Bird come back, but I think it was really helpful for us to have that kind of a social justice inclusivity kind of conversation. Um, I really feel like that's a, a topic that the city is struggling with in a lot of different ways right now. And it's, you know, projects like we're seeing tonight, uh, that's like a, the heart of a lot of different layers of that. Like people raised questions of like, um, immigration and people speaking different languages and people getting different levels of access to education, different levels of access to um, public services, homelessness. Like there's a there's a lot of stuff We're right there. A lot of stuff. I mean, even the 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 two ladies that came and talked about the children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the teachers, teachers from um, the two teachers as well as the two parents that came mm -hmm. because it's a very different perspective. Yeah, and it's, it's, hard, it's not easy to get uh, moms with little kids here at this witching hour, for sure. Tom? Well, I, I, do, I agree with you. I think that the social justice topic is one that we should talk about. And there's, there's two things that just come to mind in that respect that's particularly interesting, I think, right now. One is the nature of how much uh, support might be needed for a middle-income, permanently affordable house versus a lower income affordable house and what the what the city is interested in in using its resources for in that respect because i think that's a that can lead to a very fundamental question of social justice and the other is uh, issues that are associated with the requirements for cities to provide housing for those who want to live there and there's 
just in the latest issue of The Economist magazine, there's a very interesting article about some of the litigation going on in California, Huntington Beach, about the requirement, the legal requirement of a city to provide housing of various types for people who desire to live there. And I think that's a topic that is worth discussing also. Yeah, I think housing, housing related to that for sure. Can you, is it possible to send out a link to that sure. article? If you, if you don't mind, I'd love to read that. Yeah. And you want to say that people who want to live there or people who already live there? Or, I mean, who work there? You know, this is, Yeah. It's, I think Harmon can talk about it more coherently than I can. I think all of those are in play. Right. And so you can read the article and then you'll know as much as I do. Mm -hmm. But uh, it is litigation that's currently ongoing. Yeah, there's one of the interesting things in uh, Oregon is that it, they have, uh, everybody has growth boundaries there. Mm -hmm. But in order to maintain your growth boundary, this, each municipality is required to demonstrate how they're going to accommodate the market-based growth that that city needs to see. Mm -hmm. Because they realize at a macro level that if you close off one town, then the other town suffers. Or if you close off this town, then the county builds a bunch of housing rent willy-nilly out in open space. And so they, they essentially did a, a state-level law that required each town to um, accommodate its own growth internally inside its growth boundary if they wanted to maintain it. There's probably 15 things that are wrong about what I just said, but it's pretty close. Yeah, I think it's in, in Massachusetts that you're talking about. Is it? About. Well, I know, I mean, Portland has it. I mean, that's mm -hmm. in Eugene, uh, part of our tour. Anyway. We, we even have um, <clears throat> on city staff a, a pretty amazing resource on the topic of affordable housing in general with Kurt. Um, if, you know, we don't even necessarily have to have an outside speaker on that or, or um, because we haven't had an update from him that wasn't specifically related to a project in a while. But yeah. he, he can speak quite eloquently maybe on global topics of, maybe of housing uh, inclusion. That's a good idea. Cindy, would you mind just checking in with Kurt for us? You know, consider that the email group saying, you yeah, know, hey, yeah. Kurt, would, if you had a chance to talk to planning board at the retreat, what would you like to talk about it? I'd be happy to. Cool. Thank you. All right. Should we, uh, it's 8.27. We have the chance to finish before 8.30. What do you guys think? Should we do it? Yeah. yeah. It's okay, great. Meeting's adjourned. Good job, Brian. Thank Thanks. You. Thanks. Live from Paris, on France 24.